Alléluia. Alléluia. That short passage that we read in St. Matthew's Gospel is widely described as the commission of Jesus Christ to the disciples. That was the charge that he gave to them, the last thing he said to them before he left them. That was the commandment, the order that he gave to them, what to do, the assignment, the declaration that he gave to them before he left. And we see in 2 First Kings chapter 2 that David did the same with Solomon. He gave him a charge, he gave him a commission, he told him what he expected him to do. He gave him a declaration of what to do after his death. But there's a big difference if we compare what Jesus told his disciples to do after him and what David is telling Solomon to do after him. The first thing we see here is that Jesus, the commission that Jesus, or the charge that Jesus is given to disciples to do is a charge that brings life bring salvation. Wow. Whereas the charge that David was given to Solomon is a charge of death. Wow. He was telling Solomon those that he wanted him to kill, but without really saying so. You would see he's asking Solomon to use his wisdom here was someone that David had made a promise to, that I'm going to spare you. But David knows that person deserved death, but promised he would not touch him. But because Solomon did not make the same promise to that individual, Solomon has powers to kill that person. And that's what David is telling Solomon indirectly. I have promised him and no one will touch him, so I didn't touch him. But you are a king now. You can do whatever you like. You have no promise with him. You have no covenant with him. You can kill him. And then he told Solomon what that person's sins were and allowed Solomon to decide what to do. And we see again that David is asking Solomon what to do in his personal worship to Jehovah so that the kingdom might become stable within their family. On the other hand, what Jesus is doing is asking his disciples not about trying to keep the kingdom within themselves, like David is asking Solomon to do, or keep it within their family. He's asking them to go out into the world, into other nations. What, Solomon, what David is telling Solomon he says, keep and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. All that, all that we see ends in one thing, that the Lord may continue his word, which is paid concerning me, saying, if thy children take it to their, to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. So all the worship that David is asking Solomon to do is to ensure that his great-grand-grandchildren would hold on to that throne. Whereas, what Jesus is asking the disciples to do is to go out to other nations and win souls. He's not talking about keeping that kingdom within themselves. Take that kingdom out there to those who have not heard it. So we see two completely different ways of looking at the same kind of power that they had. Jesus is telling his disciples to go out and create more disciples. Whereas, David is telling Solomon what to do to remain in control of power. Jesus' charge to his disciples is dependent on the Father, Jehovah, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The charge that David is giving Solomon is dependent on the laws of Moses, the laws that Moses was given. And we know that when Jesus came, that law was fulfilled. We see in the charge that David gave to Solomon, he asked Solomon to shed blood just for human justice, just for justice, for judgment. Those that is asking that their lives be taken is for justice, for judgment. We see in the case of Joab, because Joab killed someone that David thought he should never have killed. So David is telling Solomon, you have to do justice, you have to kill Joab. On the other hand, Jesus is asking his disciples that the shedding of his own blood is for remission of sins. So we see where one shedding of blood is for forgiveness and remission of sins. The other is to take even, to take revenge. And we see if you compare both, Jesus ends his commission with a promise that God would be with them even until death. Whereas David did not have powers to make such promises unto Solomon. For the purpose of this sermon, I'm going to title it The Christian Charge. All authority had been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The first thing we see in this charge to the disciples first word that we see there is authority. Amen. All authority had been given unto me. So right here, David is reminding them and declaring to his disciples that he is the Messiah and that he comes from God and he is going back to God and he has powers from God. It shows here that Jesus, once again, is declaring without any doubt to the disciples that he is the Son of God. And he's commanding them into obedience. So we see that this first sentence declares or emphasizes the sonship of Christ kingdom of God. In John 14, 16, we hear that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, Paul says, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So we see here again that Paul is declaring again that God had raised Christ from the dead and had set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places. 
far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion. And we know that the Bible has already declared to us that at the feet of Christ, all knees shall bow. Amen. Of things in heaven, things on the earth, and things in the